part three to the story of me, my, my childhood trauma, overcoming my childhood trauma. Part three is when my last foster home and me and the wife, the, the mother of the house, we got into a fight. I don't know what happened. Honestly, I don't even know how the fight started. Do I? I do, I do, I do, I do. I was fighting her daughter. Oh my God, I totally forgot this in the second part. Her daughter would drag me up the stairs. I forgot about that part. She used to drag me up the stairs by my hair constantly. Because I remember I told you about the kids and I thought they were like, they look perfect. The daughter would constantly drag me up the stairs by my hair constantly. And I would just be so like, I would like just be trying to get her off of me. It was just one time. She's drug, she dragged me up the stairs like three times by my hair. The third time, I was sick of it. I was like, I'm so done being dragged up the stairs. I got up, grabbed her hand. And I swung her down and I dragged her up the stairs. I mean, I couldn't, excuse me, excuse my language. I dragged her up the stairs because I just, I was tired. She was pretty heavy, so I really couldn't drag her. But I started fighting her because we were at the top of, the, almost the top of the stairs. And I started fighting her and I started beating her up and she started calling her mom. And I was like, yeah, call your stupid mom. And I was like, bah, just hitting her and hitting her. And I had this, all this anger just built up inside me. I finally exploded. And you know that, that anger that you just have built up so much. I, I was just laying it on, on her, like just over and over and over and over. And she like grabbed me off her daughter. Her daughter ran to her room and I grabbed a trash can and I threw it at her room because I wasn't done fighting her yet. My anger was not done. You know, she had the key around her neck and... I was like, let your daughter out, let your daughter out, whatever. Um, we had ran, she had like chased me. We had, we were running around the house. This might've been a different day, but we were running around the house. She was like throwing things at me and I was dodging it because the kitchen and the living room had like this wall and the wall had stones on it. Like they had like, you know, like uh, decorations and she would throw them at me. And I was like, like at this point, I was just, I was letting loose. I was like, haha, you can't catch me. You know, I was letting loose. I didn't care anymore. I did not care anymore. At this point, I was like, I don't care what I got to do. I don't want to be in this house anymore. I'm tired of the abuse. You know, like you lie about what you do to like the 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 girl with the, I forget, I don't even know her name. She had, um, she had autism and she was nonverbal. They would abuse her and they would tell their, tell her mom that, that she would hit herself that she did it to herself and she didn't she didn't do it to herself they would hit her and they would lie about it and then she would tell me she's like don't say anything what happens in here what's sitting here saying they even they even threatened me they threatened my life they threatened to kill me when i talked to my counselor um i i told my counselor um and the counselor jfc you ain't you know what I'm saying? I told my counselor that they were threatening to kill me if I said anything to my therapist. They said if I told the therapist what was going on in the home, that they would kill me. They literally threatened my life. And I told my therapist and my therapist told my foster parent at the time, which was the person who was doing everything. And then they're like, I can't believe she would lie like that. And so they wrote me off as a liar. And every time I tried to spoke up about the things that was happening to me, they would constantly say that I was lying and I was not lying. Nobody believed me. I was like a little kid who cried wolf. You know, it's like I was telling the truth, but nobody was believing me. And actually, not the story, because, you know, the other story that the kid would constantly lie. But, like, I was actually telling the truth. So, well, back to the fighting scene. Um, chasing me around the house, throwing stuff at me because she was so pissed off at me. And I ran back upstairs because I still wanted to fight her daughter. I was not done. I was not done. She was getting all the wrath. And then... Her daughter finally, not her daughter, she finally called the cops. She had like this big, like the phone. She called 911 and she said that I was trying to, I was trying, to, she said I had a knife to her. That I was trying, this girl made a whole lie saying I had a knife to her. That I was trying to stab her. And I was like, and I, while she was talking, I was like, what are you talking about? The knives are downstairs in the counter. You have a key around your neck. How can I get up to the knife? If you have, like, you lock the drawers at nighttime and you have the key around your neck, how would I have a knife? Da 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 da. So she was like making up a lie saying that I was trying to stab her, that, that they need to come and get me and everything. Cops came, ambulance came, cops talked to me about suicide. I ever thought about killing myself. Da 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 da. And I was like, what? And I was like, no. 
and then they told me about the knife and i was like i didn't have the knife and i was like there how would i get the knife and i told the cops too i said listen that lady she has a key around her neck right there's the drawers how would i unlock the drawers and so i was like trying to speak up to me and i and nobody believed me so they took me in the ambulance gave me a cookie because i was so amped up and then um they took me to a, fo a not foster home a mental hospital first they took me to a facility um a mental hospital facility and then they grabbed me and they took me to another one which was in tucson i think and they took me to a kid's mental hospital no they left me there for three months my caseworker said if I didn't behave, I was going to, and he threatened me, if I didn't behave, I wouldn't go back to my mom. I, that's what I hate about, like, some of the caseworkers, that they threaten you that you won't go back to your mom if you don't behave. And that used to piss me off. Oh, my God. Like, I don't care about the cussing. Like, it would piss me off so much because, like, at this point, I don't want to be here. Have I thought about... Uh, probably yes in this hospital in this mental hospital that we would go we would have a salad bar line the freaking backyard was just a bunch of like a big brick like a concrete and brick we really had nothing to play with there was no life outside of this facility it was like a prison for a nine-year-old i was so there was things that happened to me in that mental hospital that I can't unspeak of. There was one time there was a girl who was like breathing heavy on me while I was sleeping. And she was trying to kiss me. So weirded out. This girl was like 16. Like get off of me. Move. And then I wouldn't. I didn't swallow my pills either. I, I was not about to swallow no pills. They would have me. They would take me every time I had like an outburst or anger or anything like that. They would take me to this metal. Like it was a metal room with cushion on the walls. And there is a metal bed. And they would lay me there and they, it was like a stretcher, like kind of like, and they would strap my arms and legs and they would leave me there for hours until I came, like, calmed down. And there was one mirror in the corner. I remember this because the staff would just sit there on the corner, like sit, sit at the, at the door where the, where the, where the door was, you know, where the opening to get out. There was two rooms. It was that room and there was another one, same one. They either had you strapped up or they had you strapped up like that with the white, like, stretcher, was it? The white strap jacket or whatever. I really thought I was crazy sitting in there. I was a kid. Who does that to children? That is child abuse. Honestly, instead of teaching a child how to regulate their emotions, you're strapping them down to a metal table. And then you're strapping, strapping them up like, like they can't move or anything like that. Like, I started hallucinating in there because the pills they were giving me started to make me feel like I was really going insane. I tried to run away from the facility. There was one time, right, because there's key cards. The doors were open every time the key card was scanned. One time, the key card was scanned. I ran through the door, and my case manager was right there in front of the door. So I was like, dang it. So I had to go back inside. Case manager came, and I only got one visit uh, with my mom that whole entire three months. And then finally, the case manager came back after the three months. He was like, oh, you're going home. You're going home. After all that in that damn hospital. They gave me all these meds. They pumped me off of all types of medication. I went through serious withdrawals after I left the hospital. And nobody knew about it. Like, I went through serious withdrawals. You can't give a kid that much different types of drugs, especially like prescribed drugs uh, for ADHD, bipolar, all that, and then completely rip them off of it. We're just going to try, you know, not having her on meds no more. Excuse me, what? There's no winging off and you wondering why I went through addictions the older I got? That is why. Okay? Um. So, yeah. After the three months of insane asylum, I go back to my mother's. And that will be in part four. Talk to y'all later. Peace. Thank you for so much for listening to my story. And I hope you get some insight and comment the experiences you have below. I love y'all. I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.